guys, I'm going to be bringing you an update on what's going on in the fish room. Not a ton, but also some good news as well. Um, the corals that I added, the SPS corals that I added, are doing fantastic, which is telling me that uh, we might be ready to start moving some of the colonies in, maybe. Um, the Aura Joe has started to impress the plug some. Uh, nothing really marvelous happening here on the Green Slimer, but that one's a slow grower anyways. That one started off as a frag, like, very, 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 very tiny, like the size of a nerd. <laughs> um, and I mean, it took it about four months to get that big there. So it's just, it, that one particularly is a slow grower. The other ones kind of grow quick, but that one there has been a struggle anyways. Um, but the Aura Joe has been starting to color up pretty good and it is encrusting the plug. So, I'm excited about that, but I'm not going to start rushing things and jumping right into it all. Um, so I'm going to take my time. All the Akins are doing really good. The Blastamusa, Blasco, is uh, starting to grow tons of heads on it. And I see an Aptasia on there. I got an Aptasia on the Blasto and uh, one of the Zoa Frag plugs. I don't know which one it is now, but one of the Zoofrag plugs, oh, this one right here, has an Aptasia on the side that I got to uh, nip in the butt. Uh, Zoas are starting to bounce back though, since we're sitting here uh, on the Zoas right now. They're finally starting to bounce back. If you remember, they were they were getting annihilated in my big tank from the Ashuna starfish and the low nutrient levels. Uh, the Sunny Ds have really bounced back. The lights just came on not too long ago, so things are still opening up. The, uh, Blue Morants are opening up again. The Tubbs Blues, I got two heads that are opening up and there's like four more that don't look like they're doing so hot still. Um, Rastas, they are opening, but they're very, very, very tiny. And whatever these ones are, there's four heads that open, but I still got a little bit of green hair algae on there that I get to pick off, but I'm lazy in my hands. I always either just wash them or just got done doing something dirty, so <laughs> that's not a bad but. Um, yeah, I mean, my hands just seem never, just never seem to be fit to put in the tank when I, when I see this stuff, you know. Uh, Refugium is doing a Refugium thing. The, uh, Ketomorpha is, <laughs> let me step back, look at this. Is this not ridiculous? Yeah, that stuff is growing wild. So it's going to be time to prune that. Um... So anyways, that's the good news there, is uh, everything is doing good. I'm starting to feel really good about uh, adding more corals. Clownfish are doing really good. Uh, still haven't had any issues with the overflow, but tomorrow I am heading to Home Depot and I'm gonna get the gutter guard anyways, and I'm gonna put it on. Um, even though they haven't gone there, there will be a time when they do go there. Uh, these guys were super finicky for about the first week when I got them. Didn't wanna eat, didn't wanna come out, they weren't interactive, and uh, they were just getting lethargic. They didn't want to eat, and that was really concerning me. So uh, what I did is I just started to spend a little bit more time inside of the fish room and uh, turning off all the pumps when I put food in there, made sure, where's my, where's my big old turkey baster thing? I got, oh, here it is. I have this very large turkey baster thingy, and I would put the food right on them, and they finally started to eat. And now they're getting a little bit more interactive. I can broadcast feed the tank. So what that means is I just dump the food in at the pump. It blows across the tank and they chase the food everywhere. So, uh, and they're starting to fatten up. Thank goodness. Because that was starting to really concern me that they weren't eating. Um, Sump is still doing the Sumpy thing. And uh, the Reef Octopus 2000 EXT is doing better now. Finally, um, finally starting to produce some skim bait. Um, what I didn't really take into account on my last video when I was complaining about it a little bit was most of this water in this entire system, I would say about 90% of it, came from water changes from the big tank. The big tank is running extremely low on nutrient load and Therefore, this is not going to skim all that well because even the skimmer that I have on the big tank right now doesn't skim a whole lot of crap within two weeks, so yeah. But we are starting to get some skimmate production out of this, finally, and uh, 
So yeah, that's pretty much all that's going on. I got a BRS order the other day. Um, I just had to re-up on my uh, soda ash and calcium chloride for my supplementation. And while I was there, I just got my DI resin because I know that stuff is going to be expiring pretty soon in the RO system. And I got two tubes of this BSI IC gel. This one, I need to take a picture actually and send to the guys at BRS because this one got beat up in package or in shipping really bad and it busted open in the box. And uh, this one made it intact. So. Yeah, so I got this stuff. This is supposed to be like really fast curing. It says right there, Insta Cure. So I picked that stuff up, and uh, that's what I'll be using to fix corals on the rock in this tank. And uh, I got a new bottle of this Revive from the LFS. That way I can dip all the corals. I'm gonna inspect them. Uh, make sure we keep. The only thing I'm really worried about keeping off of the corals is the Astrina starfish. Other than that, if the bubble algae makes it, well, the Astrina starfish and the Aptasia, if there's bubble algae or hair algae, that doesn't concern me so much because that's really not that hard to battle. The Aptasia <coughs> is like a never ending fucking battle. And the Astrina starfish, if they're in there, you're just, you're so screwed. And the Astrina starfish are the death of my Zoas. I don't know. I must have a strain of these things that uh, just love Zoas. You know, some people have them for years and years and years and years and years. Never have an issue with them. I had them for about three years, and like that fourth year, it was like a trigger. They just decided to start eating polyps. So that's what's going on, guys. Um, but yeah, that's literally all I got to say. So uh, we will see you guys in the next one, and hopefully, the next update is going to be awesome with more corals. So, uh, alright, guys. Later.